in the Lord and he gives some further instructions he says not only trust the Lord but you need to trust the Lord with your heart and then he also gives further instructions he says, but don't lean to your own understanding see that that's where we get in trouble have I got a witness Amen. But that's where we find ourselves in in debt that's where we find ourselves in, in, in legal situations financially because we lean to our own understanding how many of you know that you can uh, you, you can beg God enough to when you think that He said yes when He's still saying no? I mean, how many of you kids just come to you and say, "Mommy, mommy, 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 can I, can I, can I, can I get?" And, and, and just go ahead, just go ahead, right? But He says to lean not to our own understanding, and in our resources, in our finances, in our giving, we cannot afford. Literally, we cannot afford to lean to our own understanding. That we must have an ear to hear what Holy Spirit is saying. And so the writer says in verse 6, it says, in all that, not some, it says, in all thy ways. How many of you know that all includes your finances? All includes where you're going to send your kids to school. All includes where you're going to live. All includes where you're going to work. All includes who you're going to marry. All. Yes. 
He doesn't leave anything out. He says, all, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. When you acknowledge him, you can have an expectation that my pathway is going to be right. Amen. You can have the expectation that, that I'm going to be uh, in the will of God. So many of us are outside the will of God financially. That, that heaven is shaking her head. Because we lean to our own understanding and see things our own way. And think that I, I don't care what kind of financial background you have, but you've got to hear from Holy Ghost. He says, acknowledge him in all of the ways. And then he says, this is a promise. He just says, maybe. He says that he shall, that's a directive. He shall direct thy paths. Some of you left the house this morning with a certain amount on your mind of what you're going to give today. And Holy Spirit is saying, no, I don't want you to give that. I want you to give this. You, you may have left the house with the, the understanding, I'm, I'm going to give $50 today. That, that's a stretch for me. I'm going to give $50 but the Lord might say, give 25. Pastor Harry don't like when I say that. The, the Lord may say, give 25. He may say, no, only give 10. Because I got something else planned for you. See, we, we, listen, we, we've got to get this thing right. If we can't hear from God in our finances, what can we hear from men? We make decisions based on, I got the mortgage to pay, uh, I got that Duke energy again, I got to deal with that, uh, I've got to deal with the car note, the, the credit union, uh, uh, I've got in all that ways. In all that ways. Acknowledge him and he shall. Somebody say he shall. He shall. He shall, he shall. direct that path. Amen. Come on and stand if you're ready to give this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Again, if you're mailing in your giving, those that are tuned into the channel, uh, P.O. Box 302, here in Davenport, Florida, 33837. And the, the handle, if you're giving by way of cash app, is the dollar sign, H-C-M-I-L-I-F-E. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. How many of you love the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. It's the first Sunday in the year, yes. and you have you're in the house of God. Amen. Oh, that's that's a blessing. Okay. That indeed is a blessing that you're in the place where God will have you, and that is so so good. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. All the hearts and minds are clear in our giving. Father, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, that the people of God have come and they've given up their substance. I ask, Father, that you bless their checking account, you bless their savings account, that you bless their investments. I pray, Father, that you bless their coming in and their going out. I pray that you bless their covers. I pray, Lord God, that you would, would show them how to be uh, better stewards over the things that you placed in their care. Father, I ask in the name again of the Lord Jesus Christ. That, Father, for those that are tithing and those that are giving, Lord, that you open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that they won't have room enough to receive it. And, Father, it's for that we give you honor. It's for that we give you praise. And it is in much thanksgiving. And it's in Jesus' name. And all the church said amen. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen again. Well, let's go ahead and say our, our giving confessions. We speak to our seed, our funds freely given. And command them to go, prosper the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. May it grow, multiply, and return to us in abundance. In Jesus' name. And all the church, amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. We give God the glory. Yes, God. You know, I want to say to thee, as the praise and worship to you, that any time the Spirit of the Lord is moving, always obey the Holy Spirit because there, there's certain downloads that God has for us and I never want to cut them off you, you ever been talking to a person and, and they finish your sentence for you they, they don't let you finish the sentence they just cut you off Holy Spirit has so much that he has to say and I never want to cut him off when he's talking and then it's through this frequency of heaven this relationship that we have with God that we must have an ear to hear what God is saying. And I don't take it lightly that I get this, this opportunity to stand before you and to be able to promote this gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You know, it has to be line upon line and precept upon precept and here a little and there a little. And we have to look at things in its, in its proper content. While you're standing, Father, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, the people of God have come with the expectations to get a word from heaven. That, Father, that as we make these installations of, of these teachings, that, Lord, that it's causing our lives to change as a result of the preached gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, open our eyes that we're able to see. Open our ears that we're able to hear. More than anything, Father, I ask that you give us a heart to be able to discern and to be able to understand what we believe Holy Spirit is saying to the church today. Father, let my mouth be the pen that I'm already writing. That I can hear the oracles of God. That I hear the voice behind the curtain today. That I can hear what Holy Spirit is saying to your people. And for that, we'll give you praise. And give you honor for it now. And it's in Jesus' name. And all the church said amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated this morning. So we have entered from one year into the next. Again, we find ourselves in some unfamiliar territory. And it's much like, again, like to the children of Israel, when God had sent them a deliverer to set them free from the bondage of Egypt, enslaved for over 400 years of oppression and harsh treatment. With this slavery mindset, think about this for a second. A slavery mindset, enslaved one day, but set free the next. And set free the next, not just any old particular way, but the Bible says that the Israelites, they spoiled the Egyptians. They had all the gold, all the silver, all the jewels, all the gems. Think about that. That's, that's the mindset in the sense of the person who has this slave mentality or this poor man's mentality. And then the next day he hit the lot for 50 million. How many of you know that, that's, that's a game changer? Mm -hmm. But how many of you know that if you still have this poverty mentality, I don't care how much money you got. You, you're not going to be a good steward over that. A slavery mindset again one day, but then the next day. They have all the riches and the spoils of Egypt. Somebody say dangerous. dangerous. Yes, that's, that's very dangerous. So we exit 2023. We're leaving it behind, having spoiled it with salvation in our hearts in search of the promised land. But, but in order to get to the promised land, you've got to go through the wilderness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you, you've got to go through some, some tough areas. Did you know that when the children of Israel, when they left out of Egypt, that Canaan, that the promised land was only an 11 days journey away. From Mount Horeb, well, I'm sorry, from Mount Sinai to uh, Kadesh Barnera, which was the outskirts of Canaan. Here they are, they, they've got the riches of the world with them. And, and matter of fact, the Bible says that they, their clothes didn't even wear out. And he says there was not one feeble one among them either. So they have their health and they have their wealth. Glory to God. That's awesome to me. But they're in the wilderness. And God led them through the wilderness, although there was a, a quicker path, but God had to see what was in their heart. He wanted to see what was in their heart. And now we're in this wilderness situation. We're in 2024. And I'm here to tell you that God wants to see. He wants to know what's in your heart. There's some things. There's some, some, yeah. some blessings. There's some manifestations that God has already set up for you in 2024. But, but you might have to go through this wilderness experience. Because God wants you. Not only does he know, but he wants you to know what's in your heart. 40 years in the wilderness. Don't you know that sin will cause you to lose focus yes. of your purpose? Yes. Somebody say purpose. purpose. Mm -hmm. Open your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 4. In Proverbs chapter 4, and this is in the, uh, uh, the Passion Translation Bible. And this is our, our theme that we're running with this year, 2024. Last year, 
uh, we ran with the theme of refreshing and restoration. How, how many of you remember that? Refreshing and restoration. Now, just because we're in the new year don't mean that refreshing and restoration still don't apply. Amen? In Proverbs chapter 4, the writer says, Set your gaze on the path before you. With what? Fixed purpose. Looking straight ahead. And he tells us to do something. He says, ignore. Ignore what? Life's what? Distractions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll read it again. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25. Set your gaze on the path before you. With fixed purpose, looking straight ahead, ignore life's distractions. How many of you know those are the things that take us off course is when we have distractions? Isaiah chapter 43, God was talking with the eagle eyed prophet in, in chapter 43, verse 18 and 19. God told Isaiah, he said, here's what I need you to do. He says, do not remember the former things or ponder. Everybody knows that means, right? Ponder the things of the past. Verse 19, he says, listen carefully. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even put a road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. <laughs> Notice here that God says, he says, the first one, he says, immediately, he says, um, let, me, let me stop your train of thought. Mm. See, as, as, as soon as he says, don't remember the former things, you begin to think about the things that did not happen. And so God had to put a pause, had to put a stop to his thinking. He says, don't think about the things that didn't happen for you in 2023. But God says, he says, here's what I need you to do. I need you to listen. And he says, not just listen in any old kind of way. I need you to listen carefully. Well, that's good. Carefully means intently. Carefully means I, I've got to, to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. That God, notice that God will cause supernatural occurrences to take place in your life and mine because we have this thing called fixed purpose. Mm -hmm. the, the, the fixed purpose means that we have to be steadfast. Mm -hmm. Steadfast on purpose. Unmovable on purpose. Planted on purpose. Rooted on purpose purpose. Well, it's, it, I understand that some of you might be saying, well, how is this going to be? You, you know, already know where I'm going with that. There's the, the angel was talking with Mary and began to share with her how she was going to bring forth uh, Emmanuel, that God was going to be on the earth. And, and, and she said, wait a minute, I, I don't know how this is going to work out. And she says, how shall these things be? How shall these things be? How am I going to make it in this year? And I have the answer is that the Holy Ghost shall. <laughs> Anything that rises up against you this year, any type of mountain that you're facing, you have to be able to say out of your mouth out loud that the Holy Ghost shall. We were looking at an impossibility. How is this woman going to bring forth a child without knowing a man? <laughs> Somebody say impossibility. impossibility. Some of you here might be facing some, some health challenges. You might be facing financial problems. You might be facing some legal issues. The Holy Ghost shall. Yeah, yeah. You've got to apply that to every area of your life. Yeah. In this day and age, it will take the power of the Holy Ghost for us to keep laser focused on the things of God. Hallelujah. The theme of this year is fixed purpose. Will you say that with me? Fixed purpose. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit, he's got to be. And he must be a part of our lives if we're going to succeed with the call of God that's on our lives. Remember, you know, God called me here. Or don't, don't, don't think we got away from that. He called you here to do what? To save a nation. I don't care that we're in a new year, but we were using save, uh, to save a nation in 2023, but it still applies in 2024. He called you here. He called you here. He called all of us here to save a nation. But it begins with us. It begins in our individual lives. And understand that God, he has not changed his mind. Think about that. We change our mind all the time. We change our mind because it's raining outside. We change our mind. You check the weather. Oh, wow. I know church is at 9.45 for faith confession, but I, I don't know. Let's check the weather for it. 11 o'clock? Hey, it's going to be sunshine at 11 o'clock. I think I'll go at 11. We change our minds all the time, right? 
And the thing is, we want to have a mind that's set, a mind that's fixed, a mind that has our purpose in view. One of the things we have to understand, child of God, is that we do not have to dwell on the past. He says, behold, look, take notice, a new thing is upon us. This is not a New Year's resolution. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about you having to go to the gym. I'm going to, I'm going to the gym. I'm going to eat right. I'm, I'm going to lose these 25 pounds. That I've been. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a lifestyle. Yeah. It's a lifestyle that we must be laser focused or fixed on purpose that we're going to be holy. How many of you know that God is still holy? Yeah. Yeah. God has called us to holiness. Yeah. I don't care what we see out here um, on social media and, and TikTok and, and Facebook and Instagram. We see things that are not holy. Amen. Yes. Amen. And we, the church, are beginning to conform to the world's yeah. way of doing things. Yeah. When God has called us, he yeah. separated us to nations. Yeah. He separated us that we be, be set aside for his purpose. Yes, sir. It's the same way this building, this cafeteria building has been set aside for this day. But during the week, kids are here. It's a cafeteria. But on Sunday morning, this place has been set aside. On Sunday morning, you've been set aside. Yes, sir. In 2024, you've been set aside. You will be. And you've got to be holy. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Amen. Must be. Got to be yes, sir. holy. Yes. In Jeremiah, as we already talked about the fixed purpose. Again, that's our theme for the year. But in Jeremiah, everyone knows that's Pastor Carol's favorite scripture amongst many. Um, Jer Jeremiah chapter 29, uh, verse 11 says, For I know, this is God talking, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to, pro wait a minute, uh, uh, could I have a little bit of liberty here? For I know the plans that I have for you. I'm going to insert my name. Come on. You can insert your name or whatever your name is. But it says, for I know the plans I have for you, David. I, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper me, yes. David. And, and not to harm you, David. Plans to give you, David, hope and a future. Yes, sir. I, I thank you for indulging me with that. But you got to learn how to take this scripture and make it personal. to God for that. Mm -hmm. Plans on the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that only he can reveal for us. In 2024, what God has already done will manifest yeah. for us in this year. It's already on the docket. It's already been pinned to the calendar. It, it, it's on my list, Pastor Carol. Uh -huh. it, it, it's on my secret list. The, the, the one that we're going to visit again in ah. six months. How many, how many have been obedient and done the list already? Come on. For those of you that know, don't know that what we have Yes. Is a list that we've made out between us and God. Yes. And with that list we have between us and God, we're going to revisit it in six months. Yeah. God, did you do what you said you was going to do? And He's going to say to you, Did you do what I told you to do? <laughs> How many of us know that God is looking for us and we, we He's looking for us in this watch? He says, Did you complete the last assignment oh that I gave you? You want this fresh word from heaven. You want this manner. You want all these things from God. And God said, But did you do the last thing I told you? I mean, those you have children, you know how that works. Yeah. Yes, sir. Did you make your bed? Did you make your bed? <laughs> Did you wash the dishes? Did you take out the trash? <laughs> but brother pastor, what about my 2023? What about my expectations? Remember, a key element for us is just like the previous year that we previous year that we must have heaven's view. Yes, sir. In heaven's view, uh, we have to understand what is heaven's view is about perspective. Yes, sir. We talk about that quite a bit. That we have to be able to see things the way God sees them. Stop looking at things from an earth to heaven perspective. And now we got to, we're children of God, right? Yeah. Then we should be able to see how God sees them. That's right. So we That's have right. to turn this thing around and say, let me see. Yeah. What's God's perspective? Yeah. What is God saying about my marriage? What is God saying about my finances? That's what right. is God saying about my children? What is God saying? What is God saying? Yeah. Come on. Yes. We won't know what God says if we don't read what he says. Yeah. We want a fresh word, but we didn't even read what he already said. Oh my God. Come on. You want fresh word? He said, but you haven't read what I already said. Come on. Okay, I see that. I have a public service announcement. And my public service announcement is that God has plans for you. And so does the devil. Oh, don't sleep. That's right. 
God has plans for you, but so does the devil. Yes, sir. But heaven says that we win, and we must be focused on what God has for us. Regardless of what the enemy is planning, we declare that his strategy, it dies at the root. We, we declare divine crop failures, you understand? Yeah. Yeah. That the plans of the enemy are being destroyed, and we can declare Psalms 91 over our lives. Yes, sir. And then I, I, I've, got, I've got something to say to you. Now, don't you be the originator of a fall. Mm -hmm. Resist the devil, the Bible says, and he must flee. But I hear him tell you something today. He can't make you do something that your flesh didn't already want to do. That's right, sir. Yes, sir. He, he don't have to nudge you, but so much. Yes. <laughs> because that enemy knows what you like. Come on. That, 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 that enemy knows how you like it. That's right. Yeah. He knows exactly what you like and how you like it. Then he's going to dress it up real nice and good for you. Yes, sir. But don't allow yourself to be a tool for the enemy. Jesus. Again, he can't make you do anything that your flesh didn't want to already do. Yes. Don't become distracted by what didn't take place in your life in 2023. Um, I don't mean to be harsh, but get over it. Mm -hmm. Come on. You can't do nothing about 2023. Well. You got to live for the moment. You got to live for the year that we're in. Yeah. Yes, sir. Peter was talking to the early church in 2 Peter. And he says, in verse 8, he says, uh, chapter 3, verse 8, he says, but do not forget. He says, do not ignore, do not miss this one thing, dear friends. Beloved, to the Lord. I love that. To the Lord, one day is like what? A thousand years and a thousand years is like one day. Our perception of time is not the same as God's. Once we get a hold of that, once we understand that, then the only thing we can depend on is his sovereignty. Somebody say he may not come when you want, but he's always on time. I trust his sovereignty. It is like the child. Noah, beautiful child. Mama wants to do everything she can for the child. Would love to get him that BMW. Would love to get him that Mercedes. But he's too young for that. He can't handle that right now. There's some things that you want from God, and God is saying, you're not ready. Oh, my God, that's so good. You're not ready. You're not ready. <laughs> and so we have to say, God, prepare me that I'll be ready to handle what you have for me. Not what I want, but what you want. God's thoughts and his ways are still higher than our thoughts and ways. Again, we must have heaven's perspective. And it's really simple. Again, his timing is not our timing. And that's not an excuse. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, what is time? Time defined. Time is a concept that measures the sequence of events, making the duration between past, present, and future. Yes. We are in our present state, pressing towards our future. And God says that he knows what he has for us. And that is good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's good. Well, Brother Pastor, how long is it going to like? He said from the beginning of the foundation of the world. Yes. He's already had this thing planned and mapped out for your life and mine. Somebody say fixed purpose. Fixed purpose. Fixed purpose or set. Yes. Yes, yes there's some things in 2023 that passed me by. There's some things that I was denied I was being robbed of my potential, my expectations, my peace, my soundness, my prosperity. It looks like that my soteria kind of just dissipated, or so it seems. And so we, the reason why it seems that way because I didn't have a proper perspective. Mm -hmm. Jehovah Gomola. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, I know you know Jehovah Rapha. I know you know Jehovah Shalom. But then there is Jehovah Rapha, uh, Jehovah uh, Gamola, the God of recompense, That's the right. God of restitution, the rewarder of our faith. Glory to yes. God. I love that. Jehovah Gamola, the God of restitution, <laughs> the rewarder of our faith. And I'm here to tell you this morning that the storehouse of heaven is open. That the things that you've been seeking God for is already open. Yes. It's already been released. Yes. We're in this year now. The things that you didn't get in 2023. Somebody say retroactive. 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 Yes. 
Lord, to God. Retroactive blessings. Yeah. Retroactive healings. Retroactive deliverance. Glory to God. Maybe you didn't see the refreshing and the restoration in 2023, but I'm here to tell you this morning, I got some exciting news that there's some payback blessings headed your way. Yes. And then again, you may not be able to handle it, but that's quite all right. I want you to have this thing in mind that I'm blessed in the city. <laughs> I'm blessed in the field. Come on. I'm, I'm blessed when I come in. I'm, I'm blessed when I go out. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need you to declare that every doorway, every single doorway that you come in, you need to declare, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Uh, I don't care if it's your car door. Get it. I'm blessed. You go out the doors and I'm blessed. Any door that you come in and go out, you need to declare, I am blessed. Yes, sir. Blessed. If you drive out of the city, I am blessed. blessed. If you're driving in the field, I am blessed. Yes. 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 Yeah, again, 2024 has been stored up just for you. It's been ordained specifically for you. People don't hate you. People don't despise a thief when he steals because he's hungry. This is what the writer says in Proverbs chapter 6. In verse 30, in verse 31, he says, but if he is caught, uh -huh. <laughs> yes, if he is caught, he yes. must pay back seven times what he stole. Yes. Sevenfold. And it may cost him everything he owns. He must give the riches of his house. Yeah. You know, the Bible says, that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. I mean, I mean, right, righteous, right, righteous. The wealth of the wicked has been laid up and stored up for the righteous. Yeah. So therefore, you can have an expectation. That's right. That wealth and riches you've got a right to. But if you don't claim what you have a right to, you will never get it. It's like having an insurance policy. Yes, sir. <laughs> if you don't claim what you have a right to, you'll never get it. The question is, what kind of policy have you taken out? How much have you invested in your policy? Or did you cash it out? Do you have a life insurance policy? What, what, what kind of policies are we dealing with? Yes. Mm -hmm. The God of recompense will show himself strong on your behalf. Restitution, my friends, are very real. Restitution is real in so much that we must have this expectation that God will order the thief to pay back. That he orders him to make it good. That God is the judge and he's the one that passes the judgment that there's a thief and he's been found. So therefore he's got to give back. You know the Bible says that the thief comes. What does he come to do? To steal. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy. But Jesus <laughs> Jesus said, but I come that you may have life yes. to the full till it overflows. Yes. And in 2024, that's my expectation. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. God has already done us good. He's already given us a hope in the future. He's already given us this perspective that we must have, that we're blessed when we come in and blessed when we go out. Yes. That we've been given every spiritual blessing that we need in order to be successful in this life. Some of you may feel, though, well, 2023, I, I, I've lost a few things. Again, I want you to remember Jehovah Gamola, the God of recompense, the, the God that pays back. And he's not forgotten you. He's not forgotten you. All of your investments, everything that you've ever given into the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, every cent, God knows about it. But he also knows the intent. He also knows the motive. He knows the why is it that we're giving. Every sweat, every drop of blood, every dime, every tithe, every offering, every sacrifice that you've ever made, God has not forgotten. Yeah. Your acts of kindness, you're showing goodness and mercy to others. Giving the shirt off of your back, God knows about it. Some of you in here act like secret Santas. And you just want to be a blessing to people. God sees it. You help that 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 single mother yes. to pay the light bill. You, you, you help that brother that was on the corner and he was in need, and, and, and God moved upon your heart to give. God has not forgotten, and yet you go without. 
God knows the hidden things that you've done for others in secret. Yes. But we must understand the terms of the blessing. There's something called small print. How many of you used to write a contract? There's something called the small print. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you don't read the small print, you might find yourself in a world of hurt. Uh, the small print or the fine print that we must be focused we must have a fixed purpose that I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living why? because I got fixed purpose in Hebrews next to the last scripture matter of fact in Hebrews chapter 3 verse 5 will you read that with me let your character or moral disposition be free from love of money Wait a minute, hold on, wait. It says, free from the love, love of money, or the inappropriate relationship. Yes. God has no problem with you having money. God talks more about money than any other thing in the Bible. Yes. Because when you have money, you can represent the kingdom well. Yes, sir. It's just you don't want to have money have you. Right. Come on. Yes, Let your character or moral, come on, read, disposition be free from love of money, including greed. Free. Everance, lust, and craving, and craving for earthly possessions, and be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have. For He, God Himself, has said, "This is where I need you to participate." Come on, read. I will not, in any way, fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not. I will not. I will not in any degree leave you helpless nor forsake nor let you down relax my hold on you assuredly not God is not forgotten he is not forgotten no matter what the calendar date says nothing is lost in the kingdom of God you have to understand that nothing is lost in the kingdom of God why? because he cares for us nothing goes unnoticed by God why? Because he sees all and he repays all. Yeah, but you don't know the sacrifices that I made last year. And you, again, you don't know the blood, the sweat, and the tears. You don't, you, you don't know about my heart, uh, how my hope deferred made my heart sick. You, you don't need, Brother Pastor, you don't seem to understand. I, you don't know what it's like to lose the house. You don't know what it's like to lose the car. You don't know what it's like to lose the apartment. You don't know what it's like to lose the job. You don't know. You don't know. I don't have to. As long as he knows. Jesus. How does that make a difference? Yes, sir. Last scripture. In Malachi chapter 3. Read this with me please. Ready? Read. Then those who honor, fear the Lord, spoke with each other. And the Lord did what? Huh? He, he did what? He, oh, okay. he, he listened and then what else did he do? That he listened and heard. He listened and heard them, the names of those who respected, feared the Lord, and honored him. His name were what? Written. Come on, here, somebody. What it was what? Written in his presence and what? In a book to be remembered. The scroll of remembrance. That's right. Denise, you have to understand that everything that we say, everything that we do, there's a book of remembrance, every good work. And if you're worried about your sin, let me see if I can help you. The Bible says, as far as the east is from the west. He says, so far shall I cast your sins from you and remember them no more. The only thing that God's going to remember in the life of the believer are the works that he's done. And the Bible talks about how the gold and, and the silver and all those kind of things, that all the, the stuff was going to burn up. So only what you do for Christ is what's going to last. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So therefore, we must have a fixed purpose. Somebody say that. Fixed purpose. And when you have a fixed purpose, you, 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 you get to stay ready. Because if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. And how is that? Because when I'm fixed and I have a purpose, and I understand that, that I'm steadfast, that I'm unmovable, that I'm abounding in the works of God. May I ask you a question? Would you indulge me? Yeah. I would love to ask this question, and it's pertaining to 2023. 
And this is an internal investigation. Hear me well. Had that thing, what we have been seeking the Lord for, had that thing taken place in our lives in 2023, the thing that we sought after, the thing that we begged God about, would it have robbed us of our desire to see Christ? Personally, was my 2023 desires greater than my yearning that the Lord would come? Nothing should supersede our desire. Nothing should supersede what we want than the desire that the Lord Jesus will come. Child of God, you need to understand today that Jesus is coming. And we must be a ready people for a ready Savior. We stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Somebody say, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we don't know what 2023 will hold. But one thing we will do, we're going to trust you. We're going to examine this word even that much more. Because in order for us to succeed in this life, we must have word. We must have this fixed purpose. It's like having blinders on and we can't look to the left. We can't look to the right, but looking straight ahead, fixed on the things of God. If you're here today, or if you're watching on this channel and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if that's you here today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we just lift up your hand. You may be watching on the channel. You might be in the comfort of your own home. You, you may be watching from your device. And you, if, you per, if you perish today, you know for a fact that you would not make heaven. If that's you today, we would ask if you would say this simple prayer along with all of us here at ACMI. Will you say this simple prayer with us? Father, I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for all of my sins past present and future I also believe that you raised Jesus from the dead on the third day and he is seated with you in heavenly places thank you for saving me thank you for loving me and if you're here and you need to rededicate your life the prayer is still the same if you need baptism of Holy Spirit with the evidence of being able to pray in the Spirit as the Spirit of God gives utterance, or if you're here today and you're looking for a church home, it doesn't matter whether you're here present in the building or you're watching online, here at Harvest Christian Ministries International, located at 1775 Sandline Road, here in Davenport, Florida, we would love to be able to worship with you. And if you become a part of the body of Christ today, you need to find a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church so that you can learn how to live this resurrected life. Amen? Amen. Come on, put your hands together this morning. Amen? Let me earnestly say to you, if there is anyone here that truly does, does not know where they stand with Christ, you can't get a makeover. Mm -hmm. If you leave out of here and something happens to you and you get taken off of this earth, there's no chance to get it right. Once you're gone, you're gone. There is no opportunity to get taken away, and then you don't know. Once you're gone, you're gone. You don't get that opportunity to come back, and you, you don't get go, get taken away, and then say, mm, darn, I, I want to go back and get it right. That opportunity does not happen. So once you once you leave and you realize I don't, I need to make it right, I want to I want to go back and fix it. That's not there. If you know you're not right with the Lord, you need to get it right. So wherever you are, whoever you are, if you're here, if you're listening, if you're looking, and you know your life is not right, you must, you have got to get it right with the Lord because nothing is promised. 
whoever you are, nothing is promised. Too many of us are living, teetering on the edge. Lord Jesus. Teetering on the edge, playing with the Lord. Amen. We're playing. We're playing with God. I'm going to get to tomorrow. I'm going to fix that thing tomorrow. I'm going to talk to the Lord later. No. It ain't promised. You can leave out of here. And stuff can happen. Pay attention. Talk to daddy. Get that thing right. Because if you leave a card does something, anything can happen. I assure you, nothing is promised. If it happens and you're not right, you know, the Bible says that when salvation shows up at your door, he says, harden at your heart. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man will open the door, he says, I will come in and I will make my abode with him. And others will be with him forever. Do you know that heaven's a real place? But hell is also real. And understand this, that hell is only temporary. Because the Bible declares that hell, death, and hell will be emptied into the lake of fire. Hell is just a temporary holding place. But when we depart this body and we're in Christ, we'll forever be with the Lord. I'm so, so, so glad about that. I, I really stress the thing about salvation because we're going to enter now into holy communion. And if you're not born again, you don't have a right to take Holy Communion. The Bible says that we have to, to search our hearts with it, make sure that we're right with God. So while the elements are being passed out to you, I'm going to give you this time to make sure that you're, you're right before God. And what I mean by that, there, only you know where you are with God today. Because we want to enter into this covenant relationship that we have with God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 26, and it's verse 26 through 29. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it. And he also broke it. You know, when Jesus was teaching about this, about the Lord's Supper or the Lord's table, he says, unless you eat of my body and drink of my blood, you have no part with me. know about that Jesus he said that's a hard saying you have to think about the practices of that day understand the culture of that day and when Jesus said that he meant what he said and so this bread this wafer it represents his body that was broken for us you know when the scripture says that by his stripes we're healed that's because of the bread you're, you're recovering sir that healing belongs to you Healing belongs to you. Healing belongs to you. We're the healed protecting our health. We're the rich protecting our wealth. It's because of this covenant they have, we have with God. He said this was broken for you. So break, take, and eat. He says take, eat, this is my body. In verse 27, and he took the cup. And he gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Well, you may be trying to figure out what, what, what does it have to do with anything. If you understand the old covenant, it was the lamb or the bullock that was slaughtered on the altar. But what caused the forgiveness of sin was when the blood touched the altar. If you just think about all the sins you've ever done, that's a lot of animals. But Jesus, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world, that is because of his shed blood, that unless there's a shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness, no remission of sins. And so Jesus says, drink you all, take and drink. For this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sin. But I say to you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine 
until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. We starting the year off right. We're starting the year off right. We're starting the year off in communion with God. And let me just share real quickly that he says as often as you do this, as long as you do it in remembrance of him, the doctor says, well, I need you to take this prescription, take it three times a day and call me in the morning. This holy communion table, if you make it holy, you can use the communion table as a part of your healing process. That this is your prescription. Glory to God. Father, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that again, that we the people of God have come before the throne of grace. Thank you for the word of God and that we have this term now, fixed purpose. Let that be embedded in our minds and in our hearts that we're steadfast and unmovable and that we'd be the ones that are abounding in your word, abounding in your love. Father, we pray for those who are watching who receive Christ today. We thank you for allowing us to be a medium, to be able to allow people to come into the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare our health, our wealth, our soundness, and our peace. Every aspect of our lives, we turn it over to you. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Father, I pray for the people of God today that this week will be an absolutely blessed week like they've never seen before. That, Father, that contracts will become available, that positions become available, that promotion becomes available, that healing becomes available because it's already been declared. And we make this declaration that something good has already happened for you today. And I'll say it again, that something good has already happened for you today. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And remember that the harvest is truly right. Amen. Glory to God.